Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are gonna build the mother of all oxygen creation machines. We also need to explore over here a little bit. You'll notice this is sort of the center of our base. Here's the printing pod, and we have a lot more visibility going on over here. I'm hoping to be able to find some sort of salt water or something over here, and the reason why is because we know it exists. We go to the star map, click on our planetoid, you can go down and see that we have a water geyser and a saltwater geyser and eight unknown other geysers. This also doesn't say if there's five saltwater geysers and three water geysers. It'll just list the geyser once. And just like that, before we can even get started, it's time for dupe number 23. So this one, the printing pod kind of made it easy on us. We only have two choices, a Bert and a Travaldo. Now, Bert's not bad. He has interest in digging, rocketry, and building, except they're also undigging, which means basically they start with a minus three to excavation or a negative one to excavation when you add into their digging interest. So we're going to go with Travaldo here. Doesn't want to do any attacking, can't do any research, but eventually there'll be another mechatronics engineer. Welcome to dupe number 23, Connor. Now we're going to take Connor and put him right into improved tinkering. But we had an excellent suggestion here. You'll notice that the dupes aren't really listed numerically, and it's because the game's going to list all the ones and skip right over to three, four, five, etc. So what we're going to do here is renumber all the dupes. So instead of starting them off at one or zero one in this case, we'll rename them to be duplicate zero zero one. And that way we can go all the way up to 150 and all the dupes will stay numerically listed. Now for the painstaking task of actually going to rename all of them. We definitely had to highlight Carol though, because Carol's turns out to be 007 Carol. That's pretty cool. Also, since we're in here, we went ahead and gave Lindsay the rocket piloting hat. So while we don't have really a need for rocket piloting yet, they started off doing some improved carry, then we put the hat on. Now we know that Lindsay will be our first pilot. Now it's time to do a little digging. And we need to do this so that we can see what we're working with before we start building the mother of all oxygen creation machines. But instead of burrowing straight through this cold biome, I think what we're gonna do is come up through here and dig up through the slime biome. This is gonna give us a couple of advantages. First, we'll gain access to the natural gas geyser, which means we can start siphoning it off for some power. Second, we're gonna be able to score some additional dust caps. So we'll do what we normally do and add a few deodorizers, get them all wired up, and that way when we burrow into there, there's no chance of the polluted oxygen off-gassing into our main colony. And then we can just start building up and over. I think we're gonna burrow right on the side here into the abyssalite, and then we can come back down and start building another polluted water tank. While the dupes are working on that, it's time to expand our small little hatch farm here. Our first stone hatch is complete, so instead of killing these hatches unnecessarily early, we're just gonna start another stable and then end up running 16 hatches. This will be great for our coal supply. We may end up culling it back down to one stable in the future, but for now, this will be fine. Now, as we were digging down, we have a small carbon dioxide problem in here. So we're gonna make a small vent shaft, which is actually gonna serve a couple of purposes. One, it's gonna allow us to look at some of this area below here. Namely, I see a bunch of salt water, which means the salt water geyser could be right around here. All right, we have our first couple of stone hatches in here, and that is before we've even dug all of this out. And it's good because it'll allow them to start getting fed and so they can start laying eggs themselves. Uh-oh. Okay, this is an issue. Sir Ruff, how long have you been a scientist? You do understand that you can't maroon yourself over here. I think if we dig these two out, that might work, hopefully, because there's no oxygen around here. So we might want to do something like this as well. Put some emergency commands on it. All right, digging out this one allowed Sir Ruff to get off of the ledge and then climb back down and all the way back up. I've really got to be more careful when I'm digging around sand. We got a new printable. Unfortunately, I think I accidentally hit unpause and not realizing that we were paused for the printing. So we've lost about 25% of a cycle before I noticed it. Now, I hate to pass up a good meep, except this meep is flatulent, so that's not really going to work out for us. And then Lyra here is a narcoleptic, so we're going to take the Ari who's supplying rocketry, researching, and just put them straight into filling up storage bins, really. Welcome dupe number 24, Zadnax. And after I take another look at it, 
I think Zadnax is going to be a future researching pilot. I mean, they have all the prerequisites, so they'll start off on the carry mission, but then we'll move them over to rocketry and research. Progress here is going pretty well. We're going to go ahead and dig up to this point and then diagonally build a tile here. And that way, all the natural gas sitting next to this natural gas geyser doesn't escape until we're ready to use it. And then from there, we're just going to go ahead and dig all the way down. We've put some side supports here. That way, we can fill water all the way up to this point. That worked out just like a charm. So now we can dig all the way over and we'll even be able to grab some of these dust caps. Peeking over here, we have found a lot of uranium ore and some wolframite, a few more weaseworts, but this is just as cold as this is. So now I'm thinking about digging our way through the abyssalite layer to see what we can find out. So here's the plan, and it's gonna take a little while because it requires a digging skill of two, and we only have so many dupes that are doing that, but at least we'll get a peek on what's over here. Dupe number 25 is yet another easy choice. We have Ellie, who's an anemic, no thank you. And then we have an unempathetic doctor who does a little bit of farming, so I don't think we need that either. That leaves it to Connor here, who's a plus 11 researcher, who also gets starry-eyed. The only bad thing about Connor is they can't do any building errands. Now this community's member's name is actually Rufus Doofus the Floofus. Unfortunately, Rufus Doofus the Floofus's name wouldn't fit into the box. So instead, we're going to go with Rufus Doofus Floofus. Hope that's acceptable. Now we're about finished with our digging onto this side. You can see we've made it all the way to the Neutronium on the east side of the map, and yet still no more geysers. And unfortunately, the geyser that we discovered down here is a carbon dioxide geyser, which isn't great either. And we know that there's more geysers on the map, we just haven't discovered them yet, but it's high in time that we get going on oxygen. Another good recommendation in the comments was to start the draining of this water geyser now, let it melt this entire biome. I like this idea. It'll be a while before it melts this whole thing anyways, and until then, this biome is still cooling down our metal refinery coolant storage. But with that being said, we also don't want this to be ejecting its 95 degree heat out into the atmosphere, so we're actually going to insulate this whole thing in. Sometimes in this game, you want to put yourself into the shoes of your duplicates to figure out what they were thinking. Now, obviously, Allison could see the fact that they were actually finishing a wall and they were on the other side of it. Now, there is polluted oxygen in here, so I think the best bet to get Allison free is to just dig their way out. All right, we've managed to start this whole process over again and no dupes are at the danger of dying. We're going to get this water geyser analyzed to be able to figure out exactly how many duplicates it can support. And then we're also going to bust into here. Once they're finished, we're actually going to close off the entire thing. And that way, all the heat that this 95 degree water geyser is producing will stay in here, push across down through here, and melt this whole biome. The only issue I have with this process is we have an area right here where water is going to be able to seep down into and then come over through here. Wouldn't be so bad, except there's another break in here, and I don't know how far over it goes. So we're going to have a bit of a mess, but it'll be okay. By then, we'll be in Atmo suits, and we'll be able to fix it up nice. At this point, I think the game's just playing tricks on me. Once again, we have some very average, not great dupes. Nails is completely out because of bottomless stomach. Yeah, Ashcan's a pilot, but so is Joshua, and at least they can do some building. Welcome dupe number 26, J.M. Mort. Now we have enough pilots, so old J.M. Mort's going to go right into building. I think they're going to be a demolitions expert. So after a month of Sundays, we finally completed the analysis on this water geyser, and it's due to give us 2.31 kilos per second. That's not great and is actually only enough to support about 15 duplicates. And here you can see that the 95C water is making quick work of this biome. It's already dug down a few tiles, but with that complete, it's time to turn our attention on to another task. Over on my test map, I've built a self-powered oxygen machine. The reason why is I wanted to see if we could adapt this to actually support 150 duplicates instead of just 30 that a normal spawn does. So at first I thought, well, I'd just build five of these and stack them right next to each other. And that would work, but it's not the cleanest way to do it. So I started experimenting with joining them and seeing what I could do. And that's when we invented this monstrosity. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Mega Spawn. Now that's a horrible name, so I'm going to look for some better ideas down in the comments below. All said and done, this system will produce enough oxygen for 88 duplicates. That's right, 
there's 10 electrolyzers and they are supplying the oxygen and the hydrogen for 17 gas pumps. And you might be wondering why I chose to cap it at 10. And the answer is in the water. You see, one pipe of water can transport 10 kilograms of water per second. It just so happens that an electrolyzer can use one kilo per second. There go, 10 electrolyzers is one full pipe of water. Now it took some tinkering, but this system is fully stable. The hydrogen supplies power to 10 hydrogen generators, and then we have two of them on the runoff. And all those hydrogen generators are supplying their power to one smart battery, just like a normal SPOM. The only thing that we had to really do different and what I had to experiment with is the amount of gas pumps inside the main hydrogen area. Now based on sheer ratios, 10 electrolyzers means 2.5 gas pumps, but we managed to get it working with just two. The only thing it took was some adjustment on the Atmos sensors, and there's good reason why. The hydrogen gas pumps are still set at 250, but the oxygen gas pumps are now set at 600. And the reason why is because we needed to provide enough pressure that allowed this hydrogen not to fall down and be absorbed by these gas pumps. So by increasing these from 450 to 600, we discovered a good ratio that kept the hydrogen and the oxygen pressure stable. On top of this system, we also have to supply a pretty decent cooling solution in order to make sure that the oxygen being supplied to our base was in 55, 60 degrees. And we've managed to get it stabilized to where we can produce anywhere from 10 all the way up to 25 degree oxygen. Higher if we wanted to, but I don't see why we would need to. And all it took was one cooling loop using polluted water. In fact, this whole solution only requires enough steel for one thermal aqua tuner and enough plastic for one steam turbine. Everything else is made out of gold amalgam or gold. The difficult part is the size. You can see here that the system is 21 tiles high and 26 tiles wide. So we're looking for a footprint that is at least 21 by 26 to start but then needs to expand all the way to 27 to account for the cooling system. So just to be safe, we're going to say sort of 35 by 35. So back on our 150 dupe colony, we need to figure out a space for not one, but two of them. And based on the way they work, I figured we'd have one here and one here. Now we don't have the water to be able to supply one full one, but again, just like a normal spawn, we can feed it as little or as much water as we need and it'll provide the oxygen that that water supplies and unfortunately we're gonna have to dig into chlorine to make room for this giant monstrosity remember i'm looking for name suggestions i think that'll be a good enough area to start with the only thing to note about this huge digging task is this area over here we're going to be very careful and start corner building insulated tiles to be able to lock this off we're also going to try to keep all of our pinch of pepper plants because you know they're great things and we like pinch of pepper nuts and then finally we're going to be grabbing all the drecos and throwing them down here on this critter drop off now in a future episode we're going to have some fun with drecos in fact we're going to make all the plastic and all the reed fiber and now it's time for a beautiful montage Alright, that montage has gone on long enough. The dupes are wrapping this up now. That was a beast of a project. We ended up with seven sick duplicates. All with slime lung. Not to mention all the chlorine we released is causing the itchy eyes and everything else. It's been a mess. In the course of the giant digging project, we had a couple of duplicates come through the printing pod. First, duplicate number 27, Nat ZD, who's gonna be a tidying dupe. They also have a green thumb and animal lover. Welcome to the colony, Nat ZD. Next was dupe number 28, Basher Gaming. Now, Basher is an operator researcher with diver's lung, which actually saves us a little on the oxygen consumption. Unfortunately, they're also a slow learner and a shabby dresser. Not too bad overall, though. And then finally, dupe number 29, Citrus Mod. Citrus Mod is going to be a tidying rancher. They're uncultured. They got mole hands. And their only negative is unempathetic. Welcome to the colony, Citrus Mod. But now we can start figuring out the positioning 
of where we want to lay down this massive spawn. I'm thinking it's going to be something like this, which unfortunately means this entire thing has to go, which means we need a dupe with some demolition skills. We also have gained a nice little artifact out of this, though. We found the kitchen sink. Now, we did make sure to inspect them to get the data banks before we start deconstructing all of this. We need to submit the bio scan, and then we can start tearing it down. And the fat engine is going to be the first dupe with the demolition skill. They have the point, and they are our only dedicated builder right now. And just like death and taxes, here comes another dupe. And this one is interesting. Check Lyra out. Not a single positive trait. They can't do digging, and they can't do building. But you know what they can do? Oh, they can ranch. Starting with plus 15 husbandry. Ladies and gentlemen, dupe number 30, Andrew Thomas. And before we get started, we have 60 tons of gold amalgam and 3 tons of gold. I went ahead and sent some through the metal refiner because while it's not a lot, we do have a small requirement for refined gold. And then we're going to start by throwing down the floor and that way we can put down the gas pumps. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be the right dimensions, but screw it. We'll do it live. If you've never seen it before, the demolition laser is a little different than the building laser. This thing looked like something out of the Twilight Zone. Dubican number 31 has arrived and they're unique because they are actually the first non-member to make their way into the colony. Miss Shay Shay is a community regular and one of the most positive commenters you will find. All right, we have the floor down and everything but this light fixture has been removed and it looks like the fab engine is going to take care of that right now. Now to start with, we're going to throw down the gas pumps. It'll sort of set our base so we know how wide we need to be. And the great thing about the gas pumps is they only cost 50 of the material. In this case, we're using gold amalgam because it's going to get warm. Look at all that teamwork, will ya? There is definitely one advantage of having this many dupes. Well, they finished those up pretty quickly. That means we can throw down our electrolyzers. You'll notice I already put down the airflow tiles, and now it's just five and five. Gold amalgam, of course. This one's a little bit more expensive because they cost 200 gold amalgam apiece. We're going to make sure we pick up all of this debris down here. It's definitely not something you want sitting in your spawn. This will probably be the last thing they do because it's going to take the longest. Now this next step is similar to the regular spawn. You just go one tile above where the electrolyzer is and go right over. Now in this case, we're actually going to go a little bit higher because we need two pumps in here. Now we're still doing our research for our Atmos sensors in the background. But while we have access, we'll just go ahead and link up the automation wire. And then we can do the same. We know where the Atmos sensors are going to go, so we just go straight across. Now, because of the way this system works, I chose to connect them. Now, whether or not that is required, I do not know. A lot of times in a normal spawn, I'll have them separated from left side to right side. In this case, I started with this design, so I don't want to mess with a good thing. Next up comes power. We start with a smart battery made of gold, of course and throw it down, and then we follow it up with several large power transformers. On this side, it's two, and then on this side, it's three. Except you want to make them out of gold and not copper. That would have been bad. As those are completing, we're going to throw down a bunch of airflow tiles. These are where our hydrogen generators are going to sit. You'll notice I specifically leave one gap on each side. This is so the heavy watt wire can go through without us wasting the materials on a heavy watt wire joint plate. And before we can put down the hydrogen generators, unfortunately, we're gonna have to get rid of this entire ladder run, which will be fine. It's just gonna be a little bit more complicated for the dupes getting up and down. We'll have to put ladder segments in around, a little bit of scaffolding. With the assistance of some scaffolding, we are actually ready to go get another dupe. Now, dupe number 32 is pretty easy to pick. It's going to be this max here. We could use another cook. And plus, Gossman's a yokel and Turner is nyctophobic. So that doesn't really work out for us. Welcome to duplicate number 32, a community regular that I affectionately refer to as Wit, Wit Cop Dots. Now back to the business at hand. It's time to throw down some hydrogen generators. I skip one tile there and then I just put down five in a row. And that way it's nice and symmetrical. And before we even hit play, we're going to throw down another row of airflow tiles, which will give us another five hydrogen generators. And now we can finally box the rest of it in. Mostly, remember to leave some space for your dupes to get in and out, because we still have a lot of wiring it and plumbing to do. Looky, looky, our Atmos suit sensors are done. We can finally throw those into place. 
Now you don't really have to make these out of gold, but for consistency, we're gonna do that. And while the dupes are working on all that, we can actually start throwing down things like conductive wire. Now, just like in a normal spawn system, we're just gonna bring the conductive wire down. It doesn't have to be gold. You're not gonna melt the conductive wire. And then you just wanna hook up less than 2000 watts worth of equipment. That's all that really matters. The large power transformer can handle 4,000 watts, and then the conductive wire can handle 2,000. So it's not a big deal. I just make my way down here, and I hook up a couple of pumps, a couple of electrolyzers to each one. The only sort of special note is this power transformer here comes over to the center and goes straight down, and we'll hook up a few things to it as well. Now you'll notice we got one unreachable here, so we will go ahead and put a ladder system right there just to be able to grab that conductive wire and it looks like they can't corner build these atmos sensors like i was expecting so we're just gonna throw in a couple of more ladder rungs like that and then continuing down with the rest of them now on this side we only have two power transformers dealing with the rest of this so just make sure you add it up make sure it doesn't come up over 2000 watts and i think that's just about it for our conductive wire now we get to have the fun with the heavy watt wire now again you don't want to use one of your expensive materials like gold amalgam so I'm just going to use copper ore. We're going to start over on this side, making sure we hit the battery, come all the way around here, loop it over for these power transformers, and then head up and connect these. Now I connect them on both sides. You don't have to do that if you wanted to save a little bit. But once again, for symmetry, I went ahead and did it anyways. Now that we have the position on our hydrogen generators, we can also hook up our beautiful automation wire. We're going to start from our smart battery, go all the way over, and then send it back up and go back all the way over again. Now, normally with the smart battery, you'd go ahead and you'd go 90, 60 or something like that. Because of how much power draw is coming out of this one battery, I chose to go a little bit lower to reduce the amount of time that the hydrogen generators are triggering. Now let's hook up our plumbing. Now remember, we just need one pipe to run through all of these electrolyzers. Now in this case, we're gonna be using this water stockpile here to supply the 10 kilograms of water per second. We have a pipe that goes all the way up and then we're gonna bring it over. Now what you could have done is just bring it over and slice it all the way through the electrolyzers. I choose not to do that because if there is an interruption in water, I would rather it be split off like this. And that way you don't have one pipe running in series to where the last couple of electrolyzers are not going to be getting as much water as the first few. I don't know if it would actually work that way. It's just a gut feeling, so I took it. Same goes for our gas pipes. We're going to start with our oxygen gas pipes. Now remember, it takes two gas pumps to fill up one pipe. So to keep it simple, I just do this all the way down. Now the only exception is the very last gas pump that doesn't have a pair, so I just send it straight out as well. We might be using this as sort of an accessory oxygen. Maybe in the future to feed an oxalite refinery or something like that. Now when I was designing this system, I did a few different things on how I wanted to lay the gas pipes up here. Remember, these gas pipes are also responsible for ensuring that the entire area stays cool. By using the hydrogen coming out of here, to regulate the temperature of the environment. Speaking of which, it doesn't look like we've actually researched those. I'll be right back. Ah, uh, there we go. Now, as I was saying, I tried a bunch of different methods and this is the one I came up with. Your mileage may vary, nor do I think it's gonna be that big of a deal if you decide to do anything different. And that's what it looks like. You could wrap it around a bunch of different ways. The only thing that matters is all the equipment's being touched by the radiant gas pipes that I just built a ton of. And unfortunately, the radiant gas pipes are going to be pretty expensive on your gold amalgam stores at 25 kilos per pipe. You'll notice I have a bunch of extra storage in here for backlog. And the only special thing that you have to remember is to put the overflow bridge. Now, once again, on here on Echo Ridge Gaming, we don't mess up the direction of our bridges. So we will put that down expertly so. And then we will just be able to siphon off the excess keeping in mind that we want to bring it all the way through the insulated tiles so none of the heat gets off into the environment. And we're going to put down a gas reservoir because it's always handy to have a little bit of hydrogen hanging around. And then we're going to throw down two hydrogen generators. And oh no, I just realized it was defaulted to copper ore. Which means, sure enough, all of these are copper ore. Well, it's okay. 
We still have 33 tons of algae. We're not in a hurry. This is much better. Out of our precious gold amalgam. And unfortunately, it will take a lot. Eight tons of gold amalgam just in hydrogen generators. Actually, make that 9.6. Because you need two for the overflow as well. And just because we're fancy, I like to throw down a small lamp. That way the overflow generators have something to run. And it's also a good indicator of whenever they're burning. Now the key in this is making sure that you're going to fill up the gas tank before you start expending all of your hydrogen into the hydrogen generators. And that way you'll always have 150 kilos on hand. And you can tell this episode is taking a while to record because we're already at dupe number 33. In this case, dupe number 33 is going to be this Liam. They are a decorator builder, and they also have interior decorating. So they're actually going to be a pretty good decorator. And their only negative is plant murderer. Welcome dupe number 33, first last. Also a community regular. Now because this thing produces so much heat, we're going to need to close it up before we get started. And even though we're not working on the cooling in this episode, we're going to go ahead and put down the radiant liquid pipes because we know we're going to be using them. We'll just jump over like this. And instead of using the bridge to jump over the water here, we're actually going to use the bridge for the regular water and that way we have more chill being dumped into this area. And oh yeah, you don't want to build your radiant liquid pipes out of iron. You want to build them out of gold. And this radiant liquid pipe is of utter importance. In my tests, it took my test map from about 20 degrees and 40 degrees in probably 10 to 15 cycles. It's also the reason why, even though I do have some venting prepared inside of our main colony, we won't be connecting it to the main part of the colony until we have a cooling solution in place. Otherwise, we would end up stifling all of our crops very quickly and then we would die. I think we're just about done here. Connect these last few pipes here. We'll probably need a couple of ladders to be able to reach them. And now we can actually start just buttoning it up. Now we are gonna leave one gap open and you probably can guess the reason why. But everything else for now is gonna get locked up pretty tight. For dupe number 34, we're definitely taking this gene. You could make some arguments for Nicola or Nails, but I just love the fact that Gene will start with a construction of 14, plus their buff. Yeah, they're gonna fall asleep sometimes, but that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome dupe number 34, a very active member and regular of the community, Jumpster. And with that, it's actually time to bootstrap this whole thing. And you've probably guessed why we had this little opening right here. And that way we can get the heavy watt wire in. We'll hook up six coal generators. That should be enough. And as soon as they are done and everything gets going, we'll disconnect them and cross our fingers. Now, as I'm sure you've already guessed, there is a lot of junk gas in here. It's all going to be dumped out in the atmosphere here and going into this gas reservoir. For that reason, we're actually going to break back in here for just a second, disconnect the radiant liquid pipe, and that way we don't have to go in there and repair any damaged hydrogen generators, just like so. And just so everybody can see the before, the average temperature around here is 29 degrees, not too bad. It gets as high as 32 up here, but all that is about to change. I mean, we knew we were going to make one mistake, right? We forgot to hook up the bridges again. Well, time to get back in here again. Now, this is going to take a while to balance out. So we're going to make sure we deconstruct this little pipe here, too. And that way, when we need to, we can deconstruct this gas reservoir with 150 kilos worth of gas and blow everybody's eardrums. And that way we can be sure there is nothing but hydrogen going through this pipe. We do have to temporarily put some vents on here because a lot of these pumps have junk gases stuck in them. We've cleaned most of the junk out of it, but we still got a little bit more chlorine in there. Look at that. The oxygen pipes are filled with nothing but oxygen. And we've almost stabilized here. We've got micrograms of oxygen left in here. And it's because this gas reservoir is full. So we need to deconstruct it and build another one really quick. And look at that. It's a thing of beauty. Don't worry about this junky mess. It doesn't really matter. Now we can delete this gas reservoir for the last time, knowing that it'll be nothing but hydrogen in it, rebuild it, and then we can seal it up. In fact, we are already ready to reconnect the radiant gas pipes because we have nothing but pure hydrogen coming out. And of course, there was one stuck in the pipe. We have just a little bit of carbon dioxide that's going to ruin it for everybody. 
Here it goes to damage that one hydrogen generator. I suppose that's not too bad. We'll break in there, we'll get it fixed, and then we will finally seal her up. Well, this one's not too bad. This row in here is an operator, it only starts with a plus one, but they are a quick learner and their only negative is that they're a pacifist. And I apologize in advance, I tried to make it fit, but welcome, dupe number 35, another community regular, no musicians in music anymore. And there you have it. Everything is working just as it's supposed to be. Our water is coming in and something to note about it. You're only going to use as much water as you have dupes to breathe in the oxygen. And a quick look at the automation so you can see what we have going on. And then finally the power. Now, as promised, I told you I'd show you the temperature. It's only been a few cycles. Check out this oxygen down here. Where it's coming out of the vents, it's 40 degrees already. Hence the reason we couldn't throw it into the main part of our base. But that's what we'll be working on next episode, is the cooling system. Which yes, means we'll need plastic and steel. I'm looking forward to seeing all the ingenious names that you guys think of for this spawn. And as a quick reminder to those aren't aware, we do have a Discord. It's an amazing time. Check it out in the link below. I hope you had a great time in this episode. I know I did. And I'll talk to you soon.